Good morning. This is Kello Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A cleaning and sanitation company that's contracted to work at area meatpacking plants is accused of having over 30 children working overnight shifts in dangerous jobs. The U.S. Department of Labor says the investigation into Packers Sanitation Services, Inc. started in August. It found that 31 children from the ages of 13 to 17 used dangerous equipment during overnight shifts in order to fulfill contracts at JBS plants in Grand Island, Nebraska and Worthington, Minnesota, and at Turkey Valley Farms in Marshall, Minnesota. Investigators also found that several children, including a 13-year-old, suffered chemical burns and other injuries. PSSI is accused of intimidating the workers to stop them from working with investigators and deleting and changing employment files. A Hartford family is now offering a reward in hopes of finding the person who shot and killed their dog. As we reported earlier this week, a pickup drove onto the property four miles west of Wall Lake while the owners were away and shot a chocolate lab named Lucy. Lucy's owners are now offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to the arrest. Anyone wishing to donate to the reward fund can do so through the First Interstate Bank in Hartford. If no arrests are made, that money will go to the Sioux Falls Area Humane Society. Sioux Falls police are investigating after gunshots were fired outside of a bar Wednesday night. Officers were called to the 18th Amendment on 41st Street just before 1 a.m. Police say a group of people walked outside and a couple of them started fighting. That's when someone pulled a gun and started firing. The building was hit three times. A car was, a parked car was shot. There were nine shell casings that were found. Uh, once the gun went off, basically people took off running. Police say no injuries were reported and they are still trying to figure out who fired the gun. Police hope surveillance video from the business will help. A Harrisburg firefighter is being credited with helping contain what could have been a much larger fire in an apartment complex Thursday morning. The Harrisburg fire chief says the fire started in one unit with a toaster and it spread into the kitchen area. One firefighter arrived in his personal vehicle before the fire trucks got there. He was able to use a fire extinguisher from his pickup to get the flames under control. Very good kudos with the training. He knew what he needed to do, he went in there and there was not really a immediate IDLH atmosphere, immediate life or death. So he took it upon himself going there with the fire extinguisher and good, good knockdown on it. Seven trucks from Sioux Falls, Harrisburg and T fire departments responded. Crews used about 500 gallons of water and no one was hurt. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. It is a colder start to the day, and we're still dealing with the after effects of this storm system. That coating of ice, certainly acknowledging that in the Redfield area. Of course, it's thickest here as you go north and west of Redfield, uh, through parts of Hand County, Fulton area, up into Aberdeen, and a big uh, portion of Brown County, and even to the east of there. A lot of ice out of this storm system. Of course, that is affecting clothesline today, so make sure you continue to check on that. Temperatures as of the 7 o'clock hour, teens in the east. We have single digits above and below zero in western South Dakota. Even wind chills as low as minus 20 in Buffalo. That gives you an idea of how cold this air mass is. And it's going to keep us in the 20s today. That's quite chilly. And more of those 20s in your 7-day forecast details are coming up. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Well, farmers have started putting away their equipment as harvest season is wrapping up in the area. Normally, they would be going until late November, but with the dry, hot fall we had, harvest went quickly and producers saw lower yields. Producers in the area are starting to see this reflected in market prices. Our basis locally is really good, and also we've got, we've got good you know, markets on the board, so that's going to help ease you know, the, the less production that we had. Ellens said he saw corn yields down by 20 to 30 bushels per acre compared to the average. Dakota State University fans will say goodbye to Trojan Field this weekend. Tomorrow marks the last football game at the field before demolition starts next week. ESU plans on building a new football stadium and event center as part of its athletics facilities plan. Alumni are invited to take part in this special weekend. 
It's kind of bittersweet. It's it's hard to say goodbye, but obviously it's I'm excited for what's coming and the change and the new facility that's going to be built is is going to be such an attraction for student athletes in the region. On next football season, DSU will play at the new soccer and track stadium that's close to completion. Veterans Day will have extra meaning for a Sioux Falls grandmother who served in the U.S. Navy. Sandy Aiken received a new minivan yesterday courtesy of Progressive Insurance. Her own car blew an engine, so the van means she and her family will no longer have to walk long distances. Although Aiken will have to do a deep dive into the owner's manual to learn out how to drive her new set of wheels. Every vehicle is different, and when you get a different one, you have to turn around and figure out what all the bells and whistles are. <laughs> Just have to learn what each button does. Aiken says she may drive her grandkids to some Veterans Day events today in their new minivan. Progressive has provided some 900 new vehicles to veterans across the United States over the past 10 years. Well, and today is Veterans Day, and to honor South Dakota's 56,000 veterans, here at Kelloland Media Group, we've put together a special broadcast. Join us for Veterans Voices this evening at 6.30 on Kello Extra. You can also watch the program tomorrow morning or Sunday night here on Kelloland TV. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Hey, Brian. All right, a very chilly Veterans Day forecast. And even into the weekend, not much change. We've had temperatures this morning in the sub-zero range in the far northwest. Deeper snow cover, 11 inches of snow in Lemon, South Dakota. Mobridge area, generally about four to six there. And then, of course, the snow mounts really tapered off. Not much, if any, in the, the eastern areas. But as we look at the cold air tonight and uh, the next 24 to 36 hours, it looks like the north central and the northwest will have plenty of numbers, a uh, few degrees either side of zero, maybe about five or six in the morning in the Mobridge area. Pier is going to be in that ballpark as well. Sioux Falls, we're now forecasting a low near 12. And tomorrow's highs only in the 20s again. And even folks in the far north will have most of the hourly numbers, at least in the first half of the day, in the teens. How about moisture chances? Well, I think it'll be dry on Saturday. Most of the snow up there toward Lake Superior. However, as referenced on this pattern, we're actually going to see some of that coming backward. The low is going to reorganize. And what that could do, that cold air circulation could breed some pockets of snow. This is not necessarily organized, but don't be too surprised Monday to Tuesday if we have to feature some of that. The air mass is certainly cold enough to support snowflakes. And so at this point, just enough to add a mention of that into that forecast. And bottom line is we're not getting rid of this below normal temperature trend anytime soon. I think it's probably solid for at least a week. If, uh, in fact, some of the data would suggest it's going to re-intensify at the end of the seven-day forecast. 27 today is Sioux Falls, 27 degrees in Rapid City. And other than those chances, those low-end chances of pockets of snow early next week, I really don't expect any major storm tracks coming through. Upper 20s on day 6 and day 7. We'll keep watching that. Aberdeen uh, looking at, uh, again, some possibility of snow early next week. One thought to keep in mind, too, is that the ice accumulation on those trees and power lines it is kind of a slow process to getting that off of there when you've got low sun angle and just cold temperatures below freezing. So that is certainly a consideration here for those that have the ice. Pier picked up about one to two tenths of ice with that system. And likewise, not much warmth here, is there? 20s for highs, maybe 30 or 35 on the warmer days in Rapid City, including tomorrow at 36 in the Black Hills. Check out more details with the weather online at kettleland.com.